There was a time not too long ago when we thought this matchup between Tennessee and Kentucky was going to be between the two best teams in the SEC. And it might still be between the two best teams in the SEC, but they're not the teams at the top of the SEC standings. They face off. I forgot if it was at Rupp or at, uh, at Tennessee. What's that Rupp? Yep, it's at Rupp. Yep, all right. There was a time not too long ago when we thought Tennessee and Kentucky were the two best teams in the SEC, and they may still be the two best teams in the SEC, but they're not at the top of the SEC standings. Uh, They are battling for, I still think, a top four seed when they meet on Saturday in Rupp, Uh, but it's now a matchup of teams that are trying to avoid slides. Both are coming off of losses. Uh, Kentucky lost to Florida the last time out. Tennessee was beaten by South Carolina in Knoxville last time out. Who would have thought that South Carolina would have beaten both of these teams in the last week and a half when they matched up here in, in Lexington? But uh, still a high-profile matchup. Still a very intense matchup. I think there's a little bit of desperation, though, with both of these teams looking to maintain their status among the nation's elite. Uh, and, Connor, to me, that that only adds to the the appeal of this game. That's Connor Hope. I'm Brian Ralph. Both of Heat Checks CBB here on the Sleepers Media YouTube channel. But, yeah, Connor, I think the desperation here and the fact that they're sliding – Kentucky's three and three in the last six games. Tennessee's four and two in the last six games. Uh, I think both of these teams really need a win here, which just adds another layer of intrigue to this. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I think Kentucky probably needs the win more than Tennessee. Um, I trust the experience of Tennessee to even be able to withstand. I mean, there it's a, it was a home loss to south carolina but this would be a road loss uh against one of the best programs in the country um or at least the biggest named programs in the country like the the tennessee experience on the roster i think helps them where it's not as much win for them i i think kentucky might play a dangerous game if they lose at home to tennessee of really seeing their uh their season start to get away from them a little bit. Um, they have a an easier follow up game uh, on the road against Vanderbilt, but then they have Gonzaga, who's looked good or looked bad depending on what game you watch. Uh, they have Mississippi, uh, who has been uh, you know just a solid basketball team. Uh, Auburn on the road uh LSU on the road Alabama at home like they have a really tough schedule coming up culminating in a road game against Tennessee at the end of the season so they you could say this is where the season really begins especially for Kentucky especially with their lack of experience uh on in the backcourt um for Tennessee I think their follow-up games to this game give them a little bit more breathing room it's a home game against LSU Tough road game against Texas A&M, but then it's Arkansas, Vanderbilt, Missouri following that game. Setting up a tough end of the season, but I think it gives them a little bit more breathing room to to figure yeah. things out after this game. They've also not lost three of six. Uh, they, they had the road loss against Mississippi State, but then they had four straight wins, including wins over Florida and Alabama uh, before this South Carolina four-point home loss. So, um. Do you remember Big Z? What fun that was. Maybe, maybe he maybe he comes back and, and shines in a big way in this one. <laughs> I was on Kentucky as a national championship pick because of what we saw from Big Z in that first game. And even to an extent, kind of what we saw from him uh in the loss to South Carolina. Uh I don't know what's going on, but he's played fewer than seven minutes in each of the last two games. Uh and he gave them such a different dynamic, it seemed like, Kentucky, uh, that I don't know. Like, what do you think is happening? Do you think that this is going to be what his role is? Or do you think his role can expand to what it was uh, prior to the South Carolina loss? I guarantee you there's stuff he's not doing in practice that Cal yeah. wants him to do. Uh, I'm sure there's there's some concerns about being able to switch on the perimeter uh, I'm, I'm sure he's probably missing some assignments, stuff that's natural when you have been out for two months and are just kind of thrown into the fire, right? Like that's 
that's kind of natural. It's one of those things that made that that game he had against Georgia such a big deal was he just kind of came off the sh- – I mean, he didn't come off the street. He was practicing with Kentucky. But hadn't played and, th- and got thrown into the mix and was incredible and didn't miss and was great defensively. Um, I think that was probably unfair for him moving forward. Um, but if he can get back in and add more of that element, I agree. I think he adds a, another dynamic. The other point too of this Kentucky team is that we're now in a February and they still have not played a game with their full complement of players. That was supposed to happen against Florida and uh, DJ Wagner and Justin Edwards were out, ended up being out. This may be the first time uh, I haven't seen any updated injury reports, but I, I, I think this was trending towards being the first time that they had all 12 scholarship players available to play for Kentucky. I'm not expecting that to make a huge, huge difference, but Missing Edwards and missing missing Wagner, I think, hurt them in that Florida game late when they had a lead look that they should have won and ended up losing it. Um I'm gonna say I'm gonna say this about every Kentucky game probably from here on out. I know the offense is good. I know the offense is great. I know the offense is explosive enough to win you a national championship, or make the final four. I need to keep seeing some steps forward from the defense for them to to really make a run and, and, and show themselves. And I think part of the reason why they've had this, this stretch is because they have not been good defensively. They haven't been. And you can go back to the South Carolina game, I'll exclude, because their offense just vanished in that game, which is the only time really this season that has happened. But I'll, I'll write that off, right? But against Florida, Kentucky allowed Florida to score just under 1.2 points per possession. Against Texas A&M, which was the start of this three and three stretch, um, Texas A&M team that has not really looked great since they allowed A&M to score one point two one points per possession. Like the defense has not been there. There's a reason why it has been lagging behind everything else that Kentucky has done. That's got to improve. And against Tennessee team that outside of Dalton Connect has had struggles themselves. This is, I think, another chance for that unit to prove themselves. One, if you can slow down and connect, that's great. But number two, they just scored 59 points against South Carolina, only 75 against Vanderbilt. The other guys around connect are struggling, which we'll get into here in a second. But that's, to me, if you're Kentucky, that's got to be the focus is we, we need to bring our best defensive effort to win this game. Yeah, they have played seven top 50 Ken Palm teams. And in those games, they have given up 80 or more points in five of them. The only two exceptions were 77 at home against Mississippi State and 79 against South Carolina on the road. So it is very much a team that needs, at this point, needs their offense to explode, right? right. They beat Georgia. They had 105 points. They needed 97 to win that game. They uh, they played Florida. They got just enough. They got 87 points. They needed 86 to win that game. Like they're against North Carolina, they needed to score 84. Like when you need to score in the mid to high 80s to win some of these games, like you're not going to win a lot of them. Right. Especially now that you're going up against a Tennessee team that for my money, Tennessee might be the best defense in the country still. Like I know Mm -hmm. Houston's on this historic rise. We just talked about in our, in our Houston, Kansas preview, how Houston's been unable to, to win some of these marquee matchups Uh, does, doesn't really have a huge win outside of BYU uh, on their resume. Uh, I think Tennessee uh, has started to come around offensively but also defensively they've they've looked really good they you look at their losses outside of the the hundred against north carolina like they didn't give up a ton of points their offense just disappeared um and they played some really good offensive teams like they held kansas to under 70 they held purdue to 71 um they held Alabama to 71. Like they held some of these really good offensive teams to, to not a lot of points. Uh, maybe saying they're the best is an exaggeration, but but I think that given their experience and, and given what they have in their lineup and in their depth, it's going to be really tough for this Kentucky team to score a ton of points. And that's worrisome if you're Kentucky. Right. Right. I mean, the sense defense is great. 
that matchup with that defense against that offense is going to be a lot of fun to watch. That's why I'm looking at the other side of the court because I think Kentucky has something to prove defensively. Tennessee <clears throat> mentioned scored 59 against South Carolina. Don't connect scored 31. Everyone else scored 28. And, and there was a major issue of uh, complete deferral from everybody else. And I, I've said this a number of times this week, but there is a there is a line between deferring to somebody and letting them be the number one option versus taking yourself out of the game by lacking aggression and not even trying to be an offensive threat. And it felt like against South Carolina and to a lesser extent against Vanderbilt that everybody has started not being aggressive and just expecting Dalton Connect to do everything. And Dalton Connect's a great player. You know, we, we've talked about, I think he is the non-Zach Eady national player of the year this season. Zach Eady is going to win it. I think Connect is number two in that race. And I think he is pretty clearly. Deferring to him is the smart thing and probably your best offense because you need him to be your go-to guy. But you also need everybody else to still be aggressive and still be threats. You can have Dalton Connect lead you in scoring and lead you in shot attempts with everybody else producing as well, or at least trying to produce, being aggressive, putting stress on opposing defenses. I didn't think they did that against South Carolina. It was a lot of standing around and watching Dalton Connect do Dalton Connect things. That has to improve. And I, that's a bad habit that I'm concerned will linger. They need to get out of that quickly. Yeah, I, I think so too. Um, especially, especially because Dalton Connect. He's not really a good defender. Like he's been better this year than I think he has been in the past. But I mean, if you're putting together a, a defensive team for Tennessee, uh, Dalton Connect is probably the last of their like primary rotation players that you'd want on the court mm -hmm. at any given time. But you need him on the court at all times because he provides 40% of your offense. Right. Um which is, I think, why we always said it was kind of a weird fit. And I still think it is a weird fit. Like, for as good as he's been, he's top three in player of the year, in the player of the year race right now. I do still think it's a weird fit, given the fact that there are times where you don't want him on the floor, but you absolutely have to have him on the floor at all times. Oh, see, <laughs> and, I, I love the fit for that reason, because he changed Tennessee's identity and gave him something that they needed. And I, yeah. I, th I think we've seen that. But in order to be that difference that you needed, you need the rest of the guys to still play the way they played last yeah. year and to keep that identity and let you be the difference, not let the team be the difference. And I think I think they've gotten away from that. And this is a great chance for them to refocus. Like neither of these teams really let losses turn into streaks. I'm going to exclude the stretch where Tennessee went Purdue, Kansas, and UNC. Yeah. At the start of the, at the start of this year, I'm going to exclude the end of Maui, and then a trip to UNC where they just they just didn't bring their different the, their defense. Uh, but these are not teams that lose back to back games very often no. under these coaches. No. And like the the intensity in this game, uh, I think is going to be ratcheted up a ton because of that. Oh, I agree. I agree, and I, and I think uh, I mean it's it's a Kentucky team that has been very good. Um, might not be a player of the year contender, but uh, Reeves has looked really good, certainly an All-American uh, against a Tennessee team that is experienced. They have a point guard that apparently is better than Braden Smith. Uh, they have Dalton Connect. Um, I liked. I know there. I don't don't know if there were mixed reactions, but I really liked uh, Vescovi's response to taking on like almost a lesser role. Um, I don't, I agree with you. I think it almost went too far the other way, but, but just knowing that you allowed a transfer from Northern Colorado to come onto your basketball team and take over the offense and kind of push you back in the pecking order. And you're not at least outwardly upset about it or even indifferent to it. Um, uh, but positive about it, I think is, is telling for this Tennessee team, uh, I'll get into predictions. I think Tennessee wins this game. Um, I Let's haven't liked what I've seen from Kentucky lately. Uh, after I proclaimed them my national title favorite, they have yeah. uh, just slid. And I think that's expected from a, from a team that has a ton of freshmen, especially in the backcourt, trying to figure things out and the frontcourt for that matter <laughs> at the five and the one, um, mm -hmm. which is 
the two most important positions on the floor in college basketball. Uh, I think the defense for Tennessee is the real difference maker in this because both teams have, you know, Tennessee's offense is good, not great. Uh, Kentucky's offense is great. Tennessee's defense is elite. Uh, Kentucky's defense is uh, mediocre, not bad, (laughs) if I can say it that way. So, um, and it might be bad, but but I'll be kind to Kentucky. So I just think Tennessee is going to come into this game uh, wanting to prove something after a home loss, I think in a different way than maybe Kentucky, who is maybe still focused just on figuring out who they are at this point especially since we haven't seen a fully healthy Kentucky roster. Right. I really want to just embrace this Kentucky team because they are so much fun. They are so explosive offensively. The way they play when they are running is incredible. Um, I really want to embrace this Kentucky team because I think they're a lot of fun. I think I think the way that they they play, the way they shoot, is incredible and a lot of fun. But I I can't get there with their defense. I like on the perimeter, it's it's terrible. They are a good rim protecting team, and they're still not good at like defending the interior. It's it's puzzling. It's puzzling to me. I think this is a chance for Tennessee to kind of get going and get back on track and let some of those other guys pick up their offense. It's going to be a really high scoring game, but I tr- in that scenario, I trust Tennessee's defense to get a couple stops more than I trust Kentucky. So give me Tennessee on the road by seven. Yeah, I'll, I'll go Tennessee by four or five. I think it's going to be pretty close. I just think at the end of the day, Tennessee has been there, done that. Everyone on this roster has played in these types of environments and I trust them to, to pull this one out um, without the pressure of like needing to follow it up with another huge win. Yeah, I'm with you. Well, no matter what happens, we'll be back after the game on the Super Media YouTube channel to break down the result of this game. It's all the, as well as the result of all the other big games, because there's a lot of them this weekend. So make sure you you like, subscribe, everything that every podcast tells you to do, the Sabres Media YouTube channel.